All right, so we're back on the pond repair job today. We're gonna be grabbing the SRS bucket. I think Mike said he, uh, this, he was remounting some hoses up here is what he's doing, trying to make it a little bit more, less likely to snag things. You see he's got a new bracket right there. Anyway, back on the pond repair job today. We're gonna take that bucket with us. Just gotta get it on the trailer first. Make sure we're sitting okay. This should help speed things up a little bit today. We're a little shy on time. Since we got into a little bit more than we expected last time around. Hopefully this helps us make up a little bit of ground. Literally. Oh yeah, sometimes I forget this trailer's got built-in straps. But look at me go, huh? this mountain again the real question it took me about an extra half hour to grab that SRS tilt bucket so we're gonna figure out if grabbing it is gonna be the difference maker can we make that half an hour up I'd love to make up more of that obviously let's get this bucket down there and let's get to work Mike's video finally came out that he actually bought this thing, which is good because it was getting hard to convince you guys it was a rental since he put stickers on it. Well, let's see if we can check the oil real quick. Look, there's the oil fill. Look how, wow. Oh yeah, it's got the oil. That's good. We like that. We like it on the inside of the engines. Who left their drink right in the way? have to scoot that. She's <laughs> kind of hanging on that lip right there. We'll see if she rides. Roller coaster bar. Beautiful. All right. Oil is good in here as well. We'll go ahead and throw that bucket on real quick. Make sure it's gonna work okay for us. All right, so I had to take one of the flow controllers off. It's gonna be that one. Oh yeah, she's gonna be a little herky-jerky today. One of the flow controllers was leaking around the fitting for some reason, but uh, that's okay. Still be able to make it work, it's just not gonna be quite as smooth. So what we're 
trying to do, you can see, if you didn't see the previous video, we're pretty much coring half of this dam. There was a failed overflow pipe that, uh, oh, it just started leaking into the topsoil layer when the pond was built years ago, and there's a whole bunch of seepage. There's water flowing out under the dam on this side. So we're just trying to fix that big old leak. That's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. Easy peasy. But I ran out of time last day to get the core built all the way back up. So we're going to start there. Kind of flirting with danger where I'm at right now. But all this material on the back side, or a lot of it, is actually good material. It's just, uh, it was never compacted properly whenever they first built this pond years ago. There is some bad stuff in it, so we'll have to pick through it a little bit. But we're going to use this clay on the back side that we threw off get this core built back up and then we got an overflow to put in and quite a bit of cleanup work it's the hardest part on this job has been finding the right material I definitely think this SRS bucket's going to be the time saver today. The biggest thing is I didn't have to uh, equipment hop over to the skid steer. I was able to just use this, spread it out the way I want, hop on a packer and go. Now, I know some of you are going to ask, if you remember in the previous video we talked about that big gray layer, that was the problem, the existing uh, topsoil layer that was never taken out. And that old spillway or old overflow had broken and seeped and found its way down to that topsoil layer. And I'm sure some of you are paying attention right now, noticing that some of that gray layer, a little bit of it, is making its way back into the core. That's not going to hurt anything at this point in the process. One, we're within a foot of the top of the dam. We used all new material down at the bottom. And it's not a solid layer, if that makes sense. At this point in time, it's mixed in with this material. So it's not creating that continuous layer all the way across. Now, I don't want a lot of it in there. You'll see me kind of take this out every now and then. I don't want a big continuous hump of it. But if you see a few gray spots, that's certainly not gonna hurt the big picture. Without the flow control, she's peppy, but she's peppy. The fact this grease gun showed up with grease in it is just outstanding. Rare.
All right, we are all greased up. We're pretty much up to where we need to be. He wants that path to dump out right on that dam, which is what we're looking like. That looks great. I'm gonna take the SRS bucket, start on that end, and just kind of start rough shaping this up a little bit. If we have time, we'll get those stumps, but we'll just have to see if we got the time today. Start shaping this up, blend that all together. Backside of the dam down, overflow out. So I'm going down this back slope, just kind of getting a general shape on it. That's what I'm working on now. Just kind of shuttling dirt around to where it needs to be. We're done with this pump. I just need to get this tractor moved out of the out of the way. How's he got this on here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. test for that parking brake you always got to get those parking brake tests certified and we can continue on on this adventure fantastic I'm not worried about pulling a lot of this topsoil on the back slope because if you look real close there's not a lot there anyway remember it's all it's all under the dam there's just not a lot there I'll pull a little bit just so I got something to sprinkle on top, but I mean you can see about an inch and we're into or into the same exact same stuff we're in now. Yeah, you can see there, there's just not any. Oh, what do we find? It's like a treasure hunt. Nice! Oh. Oh gosh. Man, that could go right into Mike's fleet, I'm pretty sure. Let me pull that out. Oh yeah. That's DOT approved. That's ready to go, fellas. Huh? A little bit of CLR. Starting to get pretty close to how I want this back slope to look. Just kind of working my way down, throwing all the excess down to this other end, filling in that big low spot that was there. And then pulling this behind me.
It's a little more skid steer work here. And we'll be able to kind of roll pack that in a little bit. Then overflow. Oh. So you kind of blend this corner over here a little bit. So the next step is the overflow. Don't be jealous of my tripod now. Mike sold it to me for a really good price. Oh, I can't, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty handy. Just, huh? Look at that ex <laughs> extension. Fantastic. Um, we gotta do the overflow. So we gotta go check the grade on that dock on that side. We're gonna set the water level to that. Some people are asking why we uh, pumped out the amount of water that we did to get below where we're getting ready to put the overflow in is the main reason. So I don't have water running down the trench while we're working on that. There we go. That's the bottom of the dock. Okay. All right, so we've got the bottom part of that upper platform. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of stepped up. And so on two by sixes, I don't know, five and a half, inch and a half. So we need to go another seven down, should be seven up. We're at six, seven. So, yeah, oh, I counted. I can't, math isn't my strong point. So that'd be the bottom of the lower dock. And we're gonna put the water about six inches below that lower dock. Oh yeah, we're can't, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Now the original overflow went from right about here and cut right through there, dropping down. What I want to do is take this double wall culvert. I want to bring it back up in that virgin soil and that dirt back there, keep it out of the dam material and dump it out right in there. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little bit of a ridge right there in a ditch that runs around that backside. That would keep it off the bottom of the dam and that'd keep the pipe out of the dam itself. But I got, I got to measure and see if we actually have enough to do that. I've got a 99 foot, four inch tape measure, pretty handy. 60 feet, perfect, that's perfect. Three sections of pipe, well that just happens to be what we drug down already. That'll be great. There's a little valve there, you open that up, it lets the pressure off the, this end of the system, which is great, because that makes hooking and unhooking things a lot easier, obviously. Okay. A few people are asking, well, they've asked in the past, and they asked in the last video. I gotta be real careful how I set this. So I don't break any of those fittings. Anyway, they're asking where I learned to operate, and not that I'm a good operator. Um, I can get the job done, but there's definitely a lot of guys out there better than I am. 
But honestly, Mike's just kind of my favorite kind of boss. He's the one that he just lets me do it. Puts me in something, lets me make mistakes. That's how I learn. I've always learned better that way. You can tell me how to do something a thousand times and I will forget it. I'll forget exactly what you said a thousand and one, I promise you. But if I make a mistake, I'll remember that mistake and I'll be better for it next time. So just running, I guess, would be the answer. And then going back and, and watching guys that are good operators, like watching Jerry, listening's a big thing, listening to Jerry too. How that dozer sounds, what his hands are doing, what he's looking at. I think one of my favorite things to watch on Mike's videos, no offense to perfect, I always skip to whenever Jerry's running because I like to see what he's doing. I don't know, that's the best answer I got for you there, fellas. Let's get an overflow in. We're going to be pretty shallow here at the beginning, but I'm going to try to duck down and get some depth. Black forks just sit right on this little riprap pile. Just double check that's gonna work for my grade and we'll carry on. I think we can make that work. So that is daylighted out down to the bottom. The last step we gotta do before we throw this pipe in is we're gonna do the same thing like we did for the dam. We're just gonna build a little mini keyway that goes around the entrance of this pipe that we can pack some good material in. That way we don't have water tracing the route of the pipe. We'll make it the width of the roller You can see there's that nasty bad layer right there just like there is in the dam so we'll make it the width of the roller down and in we can throw some material pack underneath where the pipe's gonna go get a section of pipe in there and pack it some more Let's see if we're able to keep our, uh, well, you're on, that's good. Keep our elevation where it needed to be. I don't feel uncomfortable sheep's footing across that as long as the dirt is, you know, a couple inches, well, several inches thicker than the actual pads on the roller. The pads on the roller will punch through, but if you got enough dirt on there, I'm not gonna crush a double wall. Let's see what we got. We're about a quarter high. I think that'll be okay. I'm not pulling it back out. Oh yeah, probably about six inches of fall there. That'd be plenty. All right, I found the applicator. A <laughs> stick or a rag works better, but a stick or a rag works better. A towel or a rag works better is what I meant to say. A stick doesn't work very well at all, if we're being honest here. And we just oop, okay. No, it's on the grunts. 
then we'll use the that thing in the background uh that one yeah okay Oh, she's going. I'm gonna go ahead and backfill just a little bit so I can scoot the scoot the excavator down and pull that last section of pipe tight. is in and ready to go well it's in we still got finished back filling but to shape the back side of that dam I'm gonna switch back to that bucket and then before I switch back to that bucket there's two stumps I want to take out up here so whenever we shape up the back side of this borrow pit we can uh, really get a nice transition so I kind of shove this step a little further a little wow I can't talk I'm going to shove this stuff a little further. Oh, there's another big stump right there, deck on Just a little further up the hill. Something came flying off this track though, and I don't know what it was. Ditch this bucket. Let's get that bag, that back bank, that's what I'm trying to say. Shaped up a little bit better. Then we'll get this thing loaded and whatever time I got left, we'll spend uh, trying to shape stuff up with the skid steer.
So here's where I'm leaving you this time around. Now, following video after this, we'll hopefully be getting the D4 and polishing everything up. So keep that in mind as we're looking. It's still kind of slimy and wet down here. Keep in mind that thing's been seeping forever. So probably about three days till we come back. Supposed to be bone dry those three days. Hopefully that helps dry everything up and we can kind of carry this around without getting ourselves in too much of a predicament. Take a gander up the pipe. Now it's not completely straight, so you won't be able to see out the other end, but can you see it all? You can't really see it all. I don't know if you can see it all. There's no crush, everything looks good. As long as you have good fill on both sides of that pipe, it's really hard to crush that double wall. It's a very tough pipe, that's why we use it. Here's how we're looking up here, leaving it in a pretty good spot. Dozer across it when we're all said and done. And that's what we're gonna end up with there. Those three stumps get shoved in the woods end up with a nice little flat area here from where that borrow pit was we'll take that dozer run that bank around really make it look nice and sharpen it up i'll be very anxious for this thing to fill up and i'll be very anxious to see if that dries out like it should if we fixed it if we fixed the main issue that should dry up i kind of got the other bucket rigged up there we gotta get this thing loaded and trucked back to mike before we finish this thing off we still got some work to do yet She's looking really nice though. I got her hooked on kind of funny, trying to avoid the cylinders on the back, obviously. The plan is just set this in the back of the truck. concern is that I got too much weight on my duels, not enough on my steer. And the trailer overpowers the truck and shoves the butt in around. The front of the truck meets the back of the trailer. But I'd say we're doing just fine. Easy. Truck is back parked in its happy space, staying nice and dry. And I'm done. That's it. I'm going back to the house. Next video, we'll be back on that job, going to get the D4, doing some D4 work, and trying to get the 855 out of there as well. So you guys see how the whole thing polishes up. Hope you guys are enjoying the channel. Hope you're enjoying the video. I'm definitely enjoying you guys being here, leaving the comments, all your support. I love it. I love all of it. That's, I don't know. I, I was like, is something clever there, Mike, would, would be good. I just, they'll stay awkward forever, because that's what I am. I'll catch you on the next one, though.